Welcome back to the lab folks. What we're going to look at today is a couple of chips. So we have a, a TL7660 and it's a charge pump or voltage converter CMOS and uh, then we have the Mac 680 and this is a voltage doubling voltage converter. It supplies both uh, positive and negative outputs from a 5 volt input. It'll give you plus 10 and minus 10. It'll work anywhere from about 2 volts in to 6 volts out. Be ideal for getting a 6.6 .6 volt positive and negative rail from a 3.3 .3 volt circuit or something of that nature. Before we go ahead with this, I just want to give you an update on these, these batteries here I got from AliExpress. If you look at my last mailbag video, these were in there. And uh, they're rated at 10,000 milliamp hour, but uh, I wasn't expecting them to actually be that. I think I was expecting them to be around about 7,000 milliamp hour. And uh, I would, I'd be fine with that because they're about, uh, what, about five bucks a piece or something like that. So that's pretty good for a 7,000 milliamp hour battery. But they've been testing a little bit less than that, some of them. Uh, I think the, the, the best one I've tested so far is about 7,300 milliamp hour and the worst one is about 6,400 milliamp hour. I'm still okay with that. But that's just to give you guys a, an update on these. I still think they're worth five bucks a piece. All right, now back to these chips here. So what do these chips do? Well, like I say, they, they, they give you alternate power supplies from, from what you have coming into them. And the way they do that, uh, the way they do that is like this. So here's, here's the uh, TL7660. Now the circuit that it has is very similar to the one in the Mac 680. We'll have, have a look at that too. But, uh, you know, we've got a two-phase clock coming in here. Um, starting off with phase one, when switch one and switch three are closed, um, capacitor C1 is going to charge up and then when it switch 2 and 4 close switch 1 and 3 open and basically the capacitor C1 is put across capacitor C2 so it transfers its voltage to the negative side and quite simple it, to, to set up the, all you need is the chip and the two capacitors like this so there's the, the schematic of it dead simple now what they don't mention in here they don't mention much about ripple and noise it can sometimes be important, but we'll have a look at that. We'll have a look and see what kind of ripple and noise they have. The Mac 680 is a very similar device. It requires four capacitors, and there's a Mac 681 requires no capacitors, but we'll ignore that one for now. It's got them built in. And the way it's hooked up is like this. So we have the four capacitors and the chip, and that's it. And like I say, it works very similar way. It's just a little bit more complicated than the way it's hooked up. Uh, but it basically when switch one and three are closed c1 is charged and at the same time on the other side c2 is being charged and then when they switch over again they're they're switched on top of these other capacitors that gives us our two times v in on the plus side and minus two times v in on the negative side so they work in very very similar fashion now let's see how they actually work so i'm going to set them up and we'll have a look at them this has got the, the TL7660. I'm going to try that one first. So I've got it all set up here. And uh, let me get this meter turned on. And we'll get a scope up on the screen there. And let's turn it on, see what we get. Okay, so the scope is showing us up at minus five volts. Let's, let's see what that actually is. Let's check the voltage going in first. Oh, we can see that meter down there. 5.1 volts going in. And we have minus five volts coming out. So it's doing it as promised as far as the DC voltage is concerned. Now I've got a, a 2K ohm load across here that represents a load of about two and a half milliamps. So that, that should be fair enough to have a look at. Now let's, let's have a quick look at the noise. So let me get the oscilloscope set up for that. For the AC coupling, and bring up the amplitude a bit here and we see that we're getting it looks like 33 millivolts of of noise it doesn't look like there's any real ripple on it um if i change the time base here yeah so we got some ripple there now that ripple we're at 10 millivolts per division and uh, that's about a half a division so i'd say five millivolts of ripple as far as that noise is concerned, a lot of that, uh, a lot of that is an ambient. So if we turn off that, we see we, we're getting about 
15 millivolts of ambient noise as it is, it adds about 10 millivolts of noise. And I think most of that is actually coming from the ripple. So yeah, it's nice and quiet for most purposes. You could filter it further if you needed something very, very, very quiet. So that's, that's not bad at all. This, uh, these chips are quite a bit less expensive than these ones too. I've forgotten what the price of them was, but maybe around about a buck and a half a piece or something like that. A very inexpensive way to add in a minus voltage into your circuit. And it seems to work quite effectively. Now, let me set up for the other one and I'll come right back. Okay, here's the Max 680. And let's have a look first at the positive supply. So we got ready here, we'll turn it on. And let's get this out here a little bit so you can see it better. And uh, it does look like we're getting 10 volts out of it. So let's, let's measure that. Let's go over here and get the ground a little bit better there. And 9.5. So we do have a 2K load on which is this going to bring down the voltage a little bit. And on the negative side we have minus 9.2. So it's doing what it says it should do as well. But I don't know if you can notice that there. Uh, on the top of that waveform there we got quite a bit of noise. So let's get this uh, scope set up to look at the noise. like 2.25 volts peak to peak. I'm sure the RMS value of that noise is not going to be very high. I mean, yeah, they're very, very short spikes. But that's that's quite a bit. And now you can see the ripple there. Let's uh, bring up the amplitude a little bit and see what kind of ripple we're getting. Now I did the calculations on this that they have in, in the uh, spec sheet. And the way I have it configured here, we shouldn't have any more than about 30 millivolts of, of ripple. But it's looking to me like we got more like 50 millivolts of ripple. But yeah, it looks like there's 50 millivolts of ripple there. So that's that's not entirely great. Although they don't mention anything in the spec sheet about the noise. So I guess if you really have a sense of circuit, you're gonna put in some sort of LC filter on this to get rid of those spikes. Uh, let's have a look at the, the negative voltage side. Now it's nice and quiet. So it's got uh, practically no ripple on it, even though it still has the same 2K load on it. And in this case, it, you're talking around about five milliamps or four and a half milliamps, given that it's giving it minus nine volts. But look how much quieter that is on the noise front there. So much less ripple, much less noise. Now I wonder why that is. Here's an interesting thing. Is There's a reason there's two chips here. This is one I got off of DigiKey. This is the one I got off of AliExpress. Now on DigiKey, these things are I think about six bucks. On AliExpress, I got uh, five of these things for about five bucks. A dollar a piece, six dollars a piece. Anyway, let's have a look at the difference. Okay, so now we got the uh, cheap AliExpress one in there. And would you look at that? It's even quieter by a substantial amount. I mean, there's so so little noise there. It's basically it's basically background noise is all there is. Let's turn that off and see what kind of background noise we get. Yeah, about 10 millivolts over the background noise. So you know, call it 25 millivolts of noise, which is considerably better than the 100 and some odd millivolts of noise of the one I got from DigiKey. So uh, do we have an equally Nice improvement in performance on the positive side. Peak to peak noise has gone way down. It's about half of what it was, but it looks like the ripple's about the same. So we've still got 50 millivolts of ripple there. 50 millivolts of ripple. Uh, so that's out of spec too. So they're both out of spec, but this is considerably cleaner as far as the switching noise goes than the uh, supposedly genuine one. I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, do we just say, yeah, it's a genuine chip, you can get genuine chips off AliExpress, or are the copies, the fakes, better than the original? Anyway, that was just a quick look at these nice little charge pumps. They're handy little devices. I think I will continue using this one. I am a little bit um, 
wary of using that with all that switching noise in there. You know, I don't know what to do to try and get rid of it other than to put extra filtering into it because apparently buying them from DigiKey at six times the price is not a, a guaranteed way to get something that's going to really work effectively. All right, folks, that's all I had for you today. I hope you got something out of it. I know I did. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.